Hey everybody, Wisco Butter Chat here. Back uh, for another episode. Today we're going to make the uh, the last piece of the tugboat, which is the uh, keel protector for the trolling motor. So I've got a two by four set up on the sawhorses, and this is a very simple cut. The measurement worked out perfectly from the bottom of the main keel to where the middle of the trolling motor um, is resting is about three about three and three eighths inches. So uh, two by four being three and a half will be perfect to protect the tip of the trolling motor. Get all my equipment on to make these two little cuts. All right, here we go. All right, so I got uh, three, actually it's probably gonna be right about three and three eighths right there because I did uh, shave off just a little bit on the bottom side here. But uh, 10 inch long piece and we'll uh, glue this side up to the bottom of the existing keel. Underneath the boat, the glorious life of a hobbyist shipbuilder. <laughs> shipbuilder. <laughs> I need to figure out where exactly to place the trim motor protector on the keel. What I'm going to do, I got duct tape. I got the keel protector. It goes like this. So I'm going to duct tape it to the keel. And then I'm going to drill a couple of holes so that I can coat the seam here with resin and then I'll screw it in place, let the resin cure, and then I'll cover up the entire thing. I'm going to tape in place here. I don't think I can actually turn the motor. I don't know, I can a little bit, I guess. Oh, yeah. It was just a little sticky from sitting for a little while. So it needs to go right there, right in front of it. Take a piece of duct tape. There. And I'll take the keel and position it. There. Okay. And then we'll come back and do the same thing on the other side. That's centered. Now I'll take the drill. Okay. So the hole's drilled. Let's see, I need to get a pencil because I got to make a mark where I want it so the holes actually do line up. And then I'll untape it, take it off, mix up a little bit of resin, coat it on, and then just screw it in place without the tape. That should hold it and let it cure. And the motor can be turned out of the way. Actually, I'll turn it the other way. Okay, motor's turned out of the way now, so when I come back to use some resin, it's not gonna get all over the motor. So what I'm gonna do this, in, I'm gonna do this in two steps. I'm gonna do the resin along here so that it's glued in place. And then a couple hours after that's dry, then I'm gonna come back and I'll cover the whole thing in uh, fiberglass. So it's completely encased and then kind of just becomes one with the, uh, with the keel here. Okay, I've got uh, some epoxy mixed up and everything's set to go.
I need to get the screws started. I want them to just barely stick through so I can line the holes up. That one's sticking through. The second screw, it's uh, a little bit farther back, is a little longer. Okay, they're both sticking through. Now I should be able to line those up with their holes, respectively. All right, well, that's in there. And the extra epoxy that I have, I'm now gonna take up to the top. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, might as well go ahead and paint this so it's primed for the fiberglass. Okay, that's coated. So I think what I'll do is just take what I have left here and coat the roof where there's still some spots that need to be coated. Okay, I don't think I have enough to do this do this next section right here. What else can I do? Got a little bit of coverage that needs to happen on this. The roof supports are coated. So now I have just this section that's not. I'm running short on what I have left here, so I'll just do this. And I, it's not that I plan to do this, just have extra from working below because I can't mix up like less than three tablespoons. And that's all this was, was three tablespoons. Just take it as far as I can take it, finish up the rest. As I have excess epoxy, I hate doing this upside down. Painting the drips are like almost dangerous. It's like getting your eye or your clothes, which these clothes I'm not concerned about, but might have just enough to scrape out of this. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough for this particular batch. So the keel is on. Uh, let that cure for a couple of hours and then I'll come back out here and cut out some pieces of uh, whew, cut out some pieces of fiberglass for uh, covering that up, remove the screws. And also well, I could work on this right now I suppose. Just um, I need to get those wires cleaned up. So I've got some clamps sitting out. So I think maybe I'll figure out a plan for that and work on that. I do have a new plan for, I think, interior pa paint and exterior paint. Inside, I think I'm gonna use a, maybe a rubberized paint and just paint everything. So it's got a nice uh, walking surface, friendly to your feet. Also has some sealing properties. Not that I'm, not that I'm worried that this thing's gonna leak. I'm pretty sure that it's nice and solid. But I think a rubberized paint would be, not only make for a nice, tugboatish working boat appearance but like I said it's also gonna be friendly to the feet so and then outside I'm actually kind of considering using well for the deck I think I'll do the rubberized paint again but for the sides I think I'm kind of halfway thinking of using a textured paint um, getting some topside paint and then adding some sand or paintable sand to it just to give it a textured look something different it will have regular bottom paint on it. I have bottom paint from the big boat. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So I've got everything prepped to uh, get the wires up, you know, wired up or hung up in place here. So they're out of the way. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, there's a screw here and there's a screw right here that I've already stuck down um, through the top deck. I've got little uh, star washers and standard nuts that'll uh, close these cushion clamps. What I need to do is get the cushion clamp around the wire 
close it up and then figure out the best position for the wire so it doesn't pull tight on the motor on the control head here. Put it this way. I'm gonna get a screwdriver on the head of the screw in the front. I will put a star washer on first and then get the nut started. Okay, so that's at least started. Now I'm going to do the other one. This cushion clamp's a little bit too big for what I need, but it's what I have. And I am gonna put this one inside so that it doesn't stick out. Golf announcers are really getting into this today. So they're not tight yet, but I now want to check the, the movement of the control head. I want to make sure that there's enough slack in the wire so that it does not pull on the control head. I think right there is about it. So I'll get the screwdriver on the head of the screw, tighten up the nut. So this one's tight. That's good for control movement. Okay, that side's done. So now the wire is secure in place. Up out of the way, I can reach up into the deck here, or the shelf, I mean. One thing I do still need to do at some point is probably just silicone around the, the wire where it passes through the deck just so it doesn't chafe or either that or do a split grommet but just doing a little bit of uh, clear silicone probably work best right there so I'll do this side okay these wires are actually smaller than the other side so those those are going to be able to slide as needed but I think in regular operation once they kind of find their spot they're going to pretty much stay where they need to stay the other wires are battery wires, a little bit thicker. So this is this is the actual motor control side and a little bit thinner wires. Oh crap, I put that on backwards. <laughs> Couldn't do the whole thing without making a mistake. All right, so that's how that will work. Probably always going to be there, but so that's much cleaner looking. Good access up under the shelf, uh, which is probably where you know life jackets will go, or maybe up under there. But either way, that cleans that up nicely, gets the wires out of the way, and it looks a whole lot better. And just so you can see how it looks on the front here, those are the screws, the four screws that are in place holding the wires up from the underside. I'll probably just paint right over those. Reason being, if I ever do need to replace cables, which is highly unlikely, I'll just break through the paint. But I think it'll look better if I just paint over them. That way they're not seen. So that's where they're gonna be hiding. Here we are back a couple hours later. I'm gonna take the screws out first. I'm gonna put a piece of fiberglass on either side. So the motor guard, as this actually should be called, the motor guard, is in place. The, the, I mean, the epoxy is still tacky. It's cold under the boat, even though the shop is like 67, 67 degrees. Under the boat here, the air is colder. Easily, I can feel it. I'm in a, a short sleeve t-shirt and definitely colder under here. What I'm gonna do is just put a piece of fiberglass on either face and then coat the rest of it as best I can because getting the fiberglass a shape around this isn't gonna work all that great. The holes that I drilled here, I'll, I'll do the best I can with filling with fiberglass. I'll probably have to come back and do a little sanding later. Not fiberglass, but a resin. I'll probably have to come back and do a little bit of sanding later. I'm gonna paint another layer 
of resin on either side and then I'll stick the glass in place. I know you can't see this side, but you'll see the other, the other side when I do it. And I'm doing this just so I can make sure that the fiberglass sticks. Obviously, I'm dealing with a vertical surface here. I want to be sure that it stays in place when I put the resin on it. All right, that one's in place. Now I'll switch to the other side. Uh, this is honestly a pain in the ass. I don't like doing this. I was thinking that I would probably cover these screw holes up with a piece of fiberglass, but I think I'm just gonna try and coat over them. And then I'll coat the back of it. I mean, the, the wood is protected. It's never gonna see the sun. In this case, the, the resin should remain intact. It should never get brittle or anything over time just because it's never gonna see the sun. And if it doesn't work, then I'll figure out some other way to, to do this. But for right now, I think uh, just putting a piece of fiberglass on either side is gonna be the best way to do this. And I'll get some wax paper real quick, put on either side. All right, so that's done down here. Let's see if I can take what's left of the resin and go back upstairs and coat some more exposed wood. These gloves suck. I hate them. Again, gloves plus. I got them at Ace Hardware. I love Ace Hardware. The, this brand is just terrible. Anyway, I got enough uh, epoxy left. It's still nice and cool because it was so cold underneath the boat. I'm gonna coat the underside of this side of the, the visor. Okay, well I had enough to do the bottom side of the starboard side of the visor, the entire front of the visor, and then started to wrap around a little bit to that side. Looks good. Okay, well we're back oh, a day or so later. I'm gonna take off the wax paper. This will probably wrap up this segment of this episode. As this week I have to travel to Seattle for work. So nothing's gonna get done on the tugboat in the next week or so. But let's see what we got here on the uh, motor protector. cleanup to do under here before I paint just a little bit of sanding is gonna have to happen motor clears it just fine there's a pretty decent ridge on this side of it you can't see that'll just sand down but otherwise uh, the seam is nice on both sides just need to you can hear it on my fingers there's a, there's a pretty sharp edge on this side. So I'll sand that. Otherwise, I think this is probably pretty good. All right, well, that's going to be the, uh, the end of this segment or of this episode. As I said, I do travel for work next week. Going to Seattle. When I get back, I will have a two-week window to hopefully, if the weather warms up just a little bit, I can open that back door and... I'll get the sides of the uh, the hull fiberglass. The fiberglass for that should be here while I'm gone. I ordered 30 feet, so 10 yards of six ounce fiberglass that's 50 inches wide, which will be plenty for this. So that will be the last bit of fiberglassing that'll be done on the tugboat. And then at that point, really it's just uh, starting to sand and uh, prep for paint. So 
I've started researching interior paints. Um, I kind of, I already know what I'm gonna do for exterior as far as colors and the scheme goes, uh, it's gonna be red and white. The interior, I think I'm gonna make a rubberized beige color. I'm researching to find which type of paint will be best for the interior. There's a couple of them out there that, uh, that I'm looking at right now. Um, Non-skid paint and tough coat, I think from Cabela's is pretty good, but I'm not sure about the color selection there. So two weeks um, after I get back from this trip and then I'm gone for another couple weeks and then I should be back for uh, a couple of months. I don't have any, any work travel at least planned um after i get back from germany so we'll get this thing finished up i think pretty much right on time i think the may time frame is looking really good so next time we'll come back to fiberglassing the sides and uh, starting some finish work so until then we'll see you next time thanks for watching hit the subscribe button and uh send me some comments if you liked it or didn't like it let me know what you think um happy boating everybody we'll see you next time